We're bringing you a complete walking tour of Carnival's brand new Mardi Gras coming up on Talking Cruise. So we're gonna start our tour here on deck six forward. Uh, we're gonna be entering the Cloud9 Fitness Center. Uh, as you can imagine, it's a fully equipped uh, fitness center on board Mardi Gras. Uh, you've got all the latest state-of-the-art machines. Because this is the first sailing, most of these machines have probably never really been used all that much. Uh, but uh, great, uh, great spot. You know, you've got the, you got the ocean view. Uh, you're right below the life deck, so a little bit of the upper view, as you'll see here in a minute, is, uh, is a little bit obstructed, but you can definitely look down to the water below. But it, uh, it's a great space, and uh, this is the time to come. It's around 8.15 uh, right now. Uh, it is a port day. We are in Nassau, Bahamas today. So uh, I think people probably got up extra early to uh, head off the ship. If you're into free weights, they have that here for you as well. And they do offer a number of classes. Uh, there's looks like some sort of a stretching class going on in here at the moment. And then over here, they do have uh, spinning classes as well which unfortunately I have not been able to partake in. So we're here at the Cloud9 Spa on Mardi Gras. And uh, sorry, what was your name again? Nikitut, I'm from, from Old Welcome Bali, Indonesia. I'm the one massage therapist on board. Nice to meet you. Nice. Okay. So uh, she'll take us on a little tour uh, around the Cloud9 Spa. Come along. All right. This is the whole therapy sauna. And here. This mix from the Himalayan salt. Very nice. Uh, like a 15-20 20 minutes. 20 minutes in yes. here? Yeah, this is great. I like the glow too. Yes. Very nice. And the next we have the hydro pool here. So combine the warm water with the jet mm -hmm. to relax your muscles. Ooh, wow. It's like a car wash for people. Nice. So the first one is for the cold water, and then the middle is for the milk shower, and the last one for the warm water. Yes. So we're going to continue from forward to aft here on deck number six, just passing through the uh, elevator lobbies right now. And uh, the Cardinal did a great job, I think, with the design here. Um, it's pretty consistent throughout the ship, uh, very clean and uh, bright colors throughout. So first up over here is the Punchliner Comedy Club, uh, which actually on this ship has its own fully dedicated space instead of being, uh, you know, part of like Limelight Lounge. Um, so you do have lots of shows. There's uh, I think two or three shows a day um, with different comedians and they will come on and off the ship depending on the ports that uh, we're visiting here. This is a great mural that uh, you see as soon as you come down through uh, forward to aft on deck number six. It's actually showing the original Mardi Gras from 1972 compared to this Mardi Gras. And uh, you can see quite a big size uh, difference there. Uh, it's just a beautiful picture, great photo spot. Uh, the other day they actually had a bell, uh, commemorative bell for the new ship launch and uh, they were taking photos uh, in front of that. And over here is the uh, Piano Bar 88. Uh, they've got some fantastic uh, musicians on board this ship. And uh, we've got several shows in here. I think we have some of that posted already to the channel. But uh, we'll be, I'm sure, having some more. This will be our last full day and night here. So just one more chance before we get off the ship tomorrow. We're now entering into what I consider my favorite spot on board the ship. This is Grand Central. And uh, it's a hub of activity pretty much all the time, uh, from shows to uh, special events. Uh, you've also got plenty of places to grab a drink. Like this here is uh, Java Blue Cafe. If you need your coffee fix, this is uh, one of the spots I recommend. And uh, something unique with uh, Mardi Gras is they have a series of like breakfast sandwiches and uh, pastries that you can enjoy in the morning along with your coffee. The pastries and sandwiches are complimentary but uh, you do pay for the coffee. 
uh, except they do have a free option, but if you want the premium stuff or a latte or something like that, a frappe, you will pay extra for that. And then heading back here through Grand Central, you can see there's lots of seating. And the, the really great part about Grand Central is when you walk on board, you walk through this part that has the lower ceiling, and then it just opens right up to the entertainment space, which is actually three decks high. And you've seen this in lots of uh, videos already, but I'm just always in, in awe of the design in here. And I think they, they really nailed it. Uh, it seems to be one of the most popular places. Like I said, it's, it's definitely my favorite, or at least in the top uh, three or four on board this ship. And we'll head back here through the Grand Central area. And there is, uh, let me show you, there is a bar over here as well. Uh, it's not open right now, but uh, it's quite busy in the evenings, especially when the shows are, are happening. There's definitely a line for coffee, which I will be in that line in a short little bit. And then here, something you've seen on lots of carnival ships is the cherry on top, uh, where they sell bulk candy and uh, gifts and toys and such. Uh, Glad uh, I didn't have my two youngest kids with me because we'd probably be in there quite a bit. I'll just take another pan around to give you a look of Grand Central over here. We'll catch it on the uh, deck seven and eight as well uh, when we pass through. Now we're entering French Quarter. Uh, and uh, oh, if I didn't mention, the ship is set up with six different zones. The first zone was Grand Central. Uh, French Quarter is the second one here, and this is the Magnolia Bar. So you can see it's got that real nice uh, southern New Orleans touch uh, from its decor and its floral design. Looks like cityscapes throughout New Orleans. And uh, this is a great place to catch your, uh, to catch your jazz in the evening, uh, grab a cocktail, and uh, just a beautiful space. I mean. Look at some of the details here. These lights uh, look like, like horns. They did a really, really nice job with uh, all the finishes in here and the, the tin ceiling. I don't know if you can really catch that, but nice tin ceiling design. Uh, so yeah, really, really nice uh, space to be in uh, during the day or, or during the evening. And there are two sides to uh, most of the areas on, on this deck uh, because it's kind of split down the middle. So I'll take you through this side, uh, which will take us now into the Flamingo restaurant, uh, which last night was open for any time or your time dining. It's one of the smaller restaurants on board um, and they do have a lot of uh, options as far as dining on board the ship and you, you can get some of the same stuff in other venues on board as well. But uh, again, very nice decor. Service was great last night. And uh, we'll bring you some video of that as well. One great thing I thought they changed on board Mardi Gras is that if uh, you traditionally like to eat in the main dining room, especially on, let's say, the second day, which is the formal night, and uh, you really need to have your lobster, that uh, is actually available in some of the other venues that are open, such as Chebang. Um, you can have lobster there, complimentary, uh, because it is uh, part of the, uh, the evening. So because they want to spread people around, they're not necessarily making you go to the main dining room to, uh, to get something like that. Now here's the Fortune, Fortune Teller uh, bar. This has been a real hit with guests. Um, this space has, uh, obviously it's a bar, so they serve drinks, but they have some very interesting uh, concoctions that they have designed for this area. Uh, we're gonna be here this evening, so hopefully we'll be able to bring you some 
close-up uh, video of that, but they have one that looks like a crystal ball and with smoke, and uh, you can just imagine it's just a very uh, sort of magical kind of uh, environment. And over here, you've got some more shops, watches, and uh, cosmetics. Definitely no shortage of places to spend your money if that's what you want to do. I really like coming through uh, French Quarter on this side because you get that sensation of the height here. Um, it is open to two decks above. And uh, this little space here, which is on the opposite side of the Fortune Teller Bar, is actually um, where they have live music in the evenings. So you can sit here and enjoy some music and uh, have drinks at the bar. And I really like how these fluted columns here actually change color uh, from time to time, and it looks really, really nice. Uh, you see here we've got Emerald's Bistro, 1396. Uh, we did it here the other night, and it was fantastic. Um, everything's kind of small, small plates, great for sharing. Um, there's a variety of different uh, types of, of options. Of course, they've got the uh, po' boys, if that's what you like, but they also have uh, like a mufaletta and a jambalaya, if uh, spice is a little more your thing. And right now it is open for breakfast time and uh, they make a lot of different uh, great dishes, uh, some with eggs, uh, just pull up here. You know, we've got the banana foster crepes, uh, shrimp and grits, uh, croissants. Uh, so really a little bit of uh, everything and it uh, looks, looks great. Give you another shot backwards here of the area. And now we're passing through the Carnival Kitchen. And this is a concept that has been brought um, from Panorama, the last ship to be launched by Carnival Cruise Line. And uh, this space you can actually cook with one of the chefs and enjoy your meal as well. Uh, they have a little communal table setting here. Uh, we didn't get to actually try this during the cruise, uh, but there are a few different uh, options you can select as far as uh, what you want to learn to cook. They have a, a barbecue one. You can learn some barbecue techniques. You can also have uh, cake making. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's um, also one that just kind of covers like the, the general basics um, of cooking as well. And I believe it's around I think it's around $16 or so per person for that, uh, that class. And you can book that uh, through the Hub app or you can come directly here and they'll uh, set you up with a reservation. Now this is the other main dining room on board the ship. And again, the, the concept of main dining room has changed a lot with Mardi Gras because of the way they've spread out and, and the new offerings they have. Uh, but uh, they are doing breakfast right now. I'll just try to uh, give you a little a little look in here. Now this is the larger of the two maining dining rooms, so it does have uh, two stories. So it seems like breakfast right now is being served on the lower, lower level. And they'll take you up here through the part that has two levels, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. But it's a really nice, nice space. Again, the colors. I'm a big fan of like teals and such, so this is a really nice design, but as you can see here, very contemporary space and they have lots of seating up around the railing over there to give you an idea of the volume. I'll just spin around here a little bit. And they do also have seating towards the uh, back there, uh, right off the ship's stern. And uh, I guess right now you've got a view of uh, Paradise Island. So we're going to move past the conference center here, which is uh, also located aft near the Palm Restaurant. And I have this set of stairs. We'll just go up here to deck number seven, and then we'll walk you through deck seven as well. And uh, Across a little bridge here, and this is the upper level of the Palm Restaurant. Like I said, it's not really being used right now. Uh, breakfast is served just on the lower level, 
but I'll take you through a quick walk through here. Give you an idea of what it looks like. Similar, of course, to downstairs, except we have a darker shade of blue with the chairs. I'll give you a shot again of that open space. Give you an idea of what that looks like. From up here. So now we're heading from the Palm Restaurant aft. We're gonna go forward on deck number seven. And I'll show you the upper mezzanine area of the French Quarter. Uh, but first we'll make a stop over here. And this is Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. Uh, this is actually a great value. Cost uh, $35 per person. And uh, they really have a great menu of, of food. I've always really enjoyed all of my times at uh, Fahrenheit 555, but there's an idea of the menu if you can sort of see that a little bit. It's not really set up for dinner yet. The tables are kind of bare, but I do have some footage from yesterday that uh, we'll have on the channel as well. And we'll be eating here this evening, so I'll bring you uh, some shots of the food uh, and the experience as well. Great wine wall over here for you connoisseurs out there. And again, you can see the little touches uh, that really kind of elevate this from other carnival ships that you may have been on. Uh, like this chandelier right here is uh, open to the three decks. It's just uh, really, really nice uh, design. And I'll walk you through uh, the upper uh, mezzanine where you can see Emerald's Bistro 1396 from the upper level. And uh, this is a really great spot here to appreciate the design. And you can see clear through to the forward section there from this two level high section. And again, more seating here. This is kind of overflow for the Alchemy Bar, which is coming up right here. Uh, the Alchemy Bar, again, it's been a very, very popular spot in recent years. Uh, they've been adding it to ships during dry docks, and they've also, uh, of course, it's been on every new ship. This is a, a kind of a different concept because it's a little more open because it's kind of in a, uh, a throughway here. But same idea as far as the drinks. Uh, you have your mixologist giving you uh, lots of different uh, things to look at and, and to sample and uh, they always have a new drink on hand. And uh, one of the touches that I like here are these uh, blocks right below the bar where they show you these, these different uh, elements and such. Uh, I think that's really, really nice little touch. The, the designers, we actually had a chance to speak with uh, the designers uh, of the ship and uh, they really, it was a labor of love, you can tell. They really tried to put as much as they could into uh, the design. There were challenges, definitely, especially it being a brand new ship, um, but uh, they are very pleased with the, uh, with the outcome. And uh, frankly, I, I am too. I, I think Carnival uh, has kind of really hit a home run with this ship. Uh, I haven't really gotten too much into that in my videos, but uh, you know, you've got to give uh, a little bit of allowance for a brand new ship launch. There's always going to be few hiccups, uh, but the hiccups that we have seen have been minor and uh, not anything that they can't overcome with time and a little more tweaking. And I'm sure that'll be coming in the weeks and months to come. And over here, we're just entering the Limelight Lounge. So as I said before, this kind of space would be shared normally with, um, you know, multi-use. It would have uh, comedy and variety shows. They have uh, did karaoke in here the other night as well. But uh, because of the size of the ship, they can have so many dedicated spaces. So you're not just, uh, you know, having to swap out uh, one space for different types of entertainment options. And uh, just give you a quick walk through here at the casino, just to give you a quick idea of what that looks like. Of course, it's a casino. And uh, there's a nice little shot here down to 
the magnolia that we were just at a few moments ago. Okay, we're gonna head back here into Grand Central again. And this is a great little photo up here. I see a lot of people taking pictures on this, uh, this chair and there's another kind of shot of the casino entrance. Just give you a quick kind of pan around. Those are the tables back there. And then they have some shops. Uh, these are the logo shops. And uh, where I definitely have to pick up the model of the ship. Um, I kind of said I was gonna stop doing that a few years ago and because uh, the number was really getting too large. Um, and a lot of them tend to look the same, but this one, you know, because it has the water slide park, it's got the, uh, obviously the bolt roller coaster. So I thought, yeah, why not get, a, get another model? And they actually, um, sold out. Um, they even sold the one that was the, the demo on the shelf. And then the guy said they found like 10 or, or so more down in storage. So I was able to snag one of those uh, yesterday. So if that's important to you, come early on on your cruise uh, and hopefully you'll be able to, to get one as well. So here again is the second level of uh, the Grand Central. And uh, I just can't get over these screens. I just love the way they change from uh, morning into afternoon and evening. Um, and this uh, ceiling treatment here is actually a starburst and uh, you can see how it radiates out. That was, uh, that was the design, the concept that uh, they were going for. We're, we have great footage, by the way, of the designers. Uh, we'll be putting that in a separate video, but I think you'll find it very informative of uh, what they went through to design the space. So here they have like stadium style seating that actually goes from deck seven up to deck eight. And uh, you can see here the sound uh, control people will sit here. Uh, so we're just gonna cut through back here. Otherwise we have to walk through the casino to get to the other side. That's another thing with this ship. It, it being a large ship, certainly, um, you know, you have to walk a lot from end to end, but the spaces do flow nicely one into the other. And this here is uh, more seating, kind of raised platform and it, it cantilevers out and I remember the designers were telling us about the challenges they had when making this space. I think originally um, they said that they had to, the engineers were saying they had to put wires uh, to suspend this and actually support it, uh, but they were able to do away with that. It just makes the sight lines, it just makes the whole thing much more clean looking as well. And over here we have the Grand View Bar, which as you can see, if you're sitting here, you do have a grand view of, of the stage area. These glass panels behind the grand view bar are meant to reflect flowing water. Uh, if you can kind of see that there, uh, that was a design element that they had put into uh, the ship. We're gonna head into the casino now. Um, this is actually a cut through that'll take us to the forward section. And as you can see here to the right, you have the uh, tables. And uh, there are so many new types of uh, slot machines available. These electronic machines are really state of the art. Um, here we have the casino bar. And uh, this area is generally uh, smoking uh, while the casino is open. And uh, more machines, uh, really there's thousands of machines in here. So whatever you're, you're interested in, I'm sure you'll find it here. Um, at the Mardi Gras Casino. And we'll just make our way through here. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have much luck at the casino. It was more of a one-sided relationship, but uh, it's okay. I haven't been to a casino in about a year and a half, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And this will take us through to the entrance of the Mardi Gras Theater. So here we are on deck eight forward, and we're gonna be just showing you a little bit of the Havana area uh, on the inside. Uh, we do have video from the exterior that we shot the other day, as well as some of the rooms, but this is the Havana bar. And as you can see here, to get out to the Havana pool and bar area, you do need to have the Havana Experience wristband. 
We're here at the Havana Bar and Pool area on board Mardi Gras, and this is a private space for those that have booked one of the Havana level accommodations. Uh, they range from interior all the way through some beautiful suites, and as you can see, it definitely has a tropical vibe here. Um, over here in the seating, all the nice rattan furniture, and uh, it's just a great place for uh, people that are in the Havana room to just chill and relax and, and enjoy, uh, as you can see, lots of amazing views from uh, these chairs that are out here. And another great feature of the Havana area is that it does have its own private pool. It's more of a plunge pool, you know, not going to be swimming laps in here, but uh, if you come up here, you can see that once this is actually filled, you will have an incredible view through the glass uh, uh, wall here. So just incredible. It's a bit of a different vantage than they've had on the Vista class ships. Uh, maybe actually a little bit smaller in the sense of the pool and the uh, area right here, but uh, equally as nice and, and just beautiful, beautiful space. Here's the Havana bar that uh, again is just for guests that are staying in the Havana suites or staterooms. Uh, just an interesting note, uh, the outdoor area is private, but any guest on board the ship can use the inside uh, part of the Havana bar. It's just the outside pool uh, area that uh, is private. But uh, this is a great tropical spot. They have a fantastic band here that's just been playing some incredible music. Uh, they take requests if that's important to you. And it uh, looks like they're either getting set up for a private function here or this might actually be a little bit of a breakfast option. Not a huge space, uh, but uh, it definitely uh, is quite popular in the evenings. Now here is uh, Shebang here on deck eight, and this is brand new. In fact, they only really announced it a few weeks ago. This was a replacement for GG Asian Kitchen, which I believe was the original uh, choice that they were gonna put on the ship, but I guess they were looking for something different. Let's see if we can get inside here. I really like the, the red glass everywhere. So here we go. So really the concept of this is that it's uh, half Mexican, half Chinese. Um, you know, you can kind of imagine you'll, you'll have different choices and, and favorites from both. I really like this guy. He's a friendly little mascot, ready to greet you when you come in here. <laughs> and uh, there's the service kitchen. Uh, we've eaten here for lunch, uh, which is complimentary. Uh, you kind of select from a uh, smallish menu, whether you want the uh, Chinese or you want the Mexican. And uh, you pretty much pick a starter, a main, and a dessert. Uh, one thing I really like about the space, though, is that it does have lots of great seating right up against the, the windows here. So you have a great view outside while you're enjoying your, your lunch. Maybe your dinner, depending on what time of year you'll be cruising. And uh, yeah, the lunch was great. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, pretty quick service. Um, and then for dinner, you have a much more extensive menu uh, that you can choose from. You can mix and match. If you want to have a starter from Chinese and a main from uh, Mexican, you can definitely do that. And uh, same, same with your, your desserts. They can intermix uh, whatever you want. And this is, again, no charge for dinner either. Uh, that's one thing, I think, to move guests around the ship. They decided not to uh, uh, just have people go to like the main dining room or, or a quick, quick service kind of bite in the evening, uh, like pizza or something like that. So you really do have choices for sit down that are not strictly in the main dining room. And I think that was a great, uh, a great concept, a great idea uh, that they did on board this ship. And maybe it'll uh, flow through to other ships. Uh, I guess once they analyze the data from us first paying guests on board. But uh, yeah, that's uh, Shebang, and I'll just do a little pan shot here just to give you another look. Okay, we're passing once again through Grand Central. Now on deck eight, this is the most upper level. <clears throat> here we have the Dream Studio. So if you wanna do some sort of a sit down uh, session with uh, the photographers you can get pictures taken uh, they, they do some nice backdrops they have props and such uh, great for families i would think and uh, again here's the view of the atrium from the third and top level deck eight but the top level of the grand central atrium and then they have this bridge 
over here. Quite a few bridges actually on board passing through the spaces. And there's the Grand View Bar from the top. There's that running water. But yeah, I, I really, I can't say enough just how much I really love this, uh, this space here. Now from here, you can actually pass down uh, with a quick access back down to the casino through these stairs over here. There's a couple of these on board. Oh, the lights just changed there. And uh, as there is on other decks, plenty of seating around the atrium. And then we're having uh, two of the bonsai options here. We've got the teppanyaki, which we had a great time at the other evening. And uh, we have over here sushi, which we had yesterday for lunch. And this looks similar to ones you've seen on other ships. Um, Vista class, as well as like Sunrise that they've ships they've been refurbishing recently, but has great uh, again ocean views, kind of like uh, Shebang. And uh, then they've got this little section here with these booths that actually look into, or if you're in the Teppanyaki, looking out to this area, um, sort of connecting the spaces, but still keeping them a little bit separate. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, you really get great value um, either at the Teppanyaki. I believe Teppanyaki was $38 per person. And um, the sushi, we had the, uh, the ship for two, which was uh, $22. So really great, uh, you know, value. You get a lot of food and uh, it's very good food and uh, great service and a great show. Some more shops here. Shops are kind of peppered throughout the space. It's not just in, in one area. So you're getting you know, the option to grab that impulse item <laughs> at different points. Oh, and it looks like over here, they're getting set up for Chris Williams, the cruise director's uh, popular show, Flying Scotsman, his one man show, which we did put on the channel a couple of days ago. And we'll try to bring you some more of that uh, a little bit later. Now we'll keep heading aft here on deck number eight. And the first part that we see here is the pixels. It's a very large pixels. And uh, a great thing is that, uh, that they've been doing on recent ships is that they have these self-service kiosks where you can swipe your cards and actually um, select the photos you want and then have them printed out. Or if you want to order some uh, specialty prints or uh, souvenir items or whatever you can do through there as well. They do also have camera equipment and accessories which are closed up right now because we're in port. Um, if you need batteries or, uh, you know, SD cards or anything like that. Okay, we're entering uh, another zone here. This is La Piazza. And uh, as you might imagine, this is the French area of the ship. No, just kidding. This is <laughs> the Italian inspired area. And uh, They've always had, you know, a pizzeria on board the ship, but they've really taken that and, and run with it. Uh, for example, here you have Bar Della Rosa, which gives you a, uh, a nice view inside and out. And they have specialty coffees here and to serve cocktails um, as well, pretty much during the day, evening, throughout most of the day. Uh, there's this little area here that kind of looks like El Fresco dining, but it's actually still inside. And uh, I just love this, this Fiat here. This is a 1972 Fiat, uh, we understand, and they had apparently a great time bringing this on board the ship. Um, it was brought in through crane and they crated it and dropped it on the back of uh, deck number eight. And they actually rolled it uh, through this area over here and uh, put it in its final spot. They said they had a great time uh, when, that, when that happened. I said it would be a great uh, ride option maybe to have people have a simulator running through here on a Fiat. Anyway, maybe in a, on another ship. So here we have the pizzeria, and uh, even though it's nine o'clock in the morning, they're still serving it up. It's, it is a 24 hour option here. And I think they, this time of the day, they kind of make them to order, so they're not just sitting around. And you do have a few different options. There's the margarita, the mushroom, pepperoni, four cheese, and prosciutto. And there's more seating over here, overlooking the, uh, the water. Now the outside area there, that is uh, a smoking section, just so you know, um, if you're looking to sit outside right over there. Um, now here is a brand new option that they added. This is Piazza Panini. 
And as you can imagine, they serve sandwiches here and uh, toasted sandwiches. There's, there's 12 options. I've made my way through two of them, but uh, each of them seems to be uh, quite popular because uh, this line can get quite long during the day. This is normally filled with bread here, which you might have seen in another video, but currently in port, it is not open. And then here's a 1972 Vespa, which we also showed you in the earlier video as well. And here's that atrium area that we were in earlier uh, down on deck six, uh, just to show you another view from the upper part. And making our way through deck eight, this is uh, Rudy Seagrill, it's, uh, Chef Rudy Sodeman's uh, seafood restaurant and we did eat here on the first evening it was fantastic uh, chef Rudy himself came out and uh, just checked in on us which was a nice uh, nice touch uh, he's a great guy I've met him for many many years uh, on different Holland America ships but this is the first time he's had a concept on board uh, Carnival Cruise Line so great option uh, again reasonably priced I believe it was $38 again and uh, lots of different choices, uh, fresh seafood, lobster, um, you name it. Just really, really great. And we're continuing to work our way aft. This is Carnival Adventures. Uh, so if you need to book a shore excursion, this is your place. They even have some shop items you can buy if you need uh, you know, a hat or a water wallet or something like that last minute. Uh, sunscreen, this is the place to, uh, to get that from. Now we're going through guest services. And one really unique thing, I touched on it at one point, is that normally when you board the ship, which on this ship would be like deck six, you would see guest services, you would see the shore excursions right there. Uh, it's a little bit different here because they actually have guest services up on deck eight, and it is uh, towards the back of the ship. So it might seem kind of odd, but I actually like that. I think people seem to go through summer landing, which is our next zone that we'll be going through. And, uh, that actually makes it quite convenient because you'll be passing through that area uh, pretty frequently. This is the port side liquor and tobacco. It's pretty self-explanatory. Duty-free liquors, cigarettes, cigars. Now we're entering uh, Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Brewhouse. They've had these on uh, some of the Vista class ships as well. This really was designed, uh, you know, by Guy Fieri, but it was a uh, replacement for the old Red Frog Pub and Brewery that they put on some of the ships as well. And uh, it's really hopping during the day uh, at sea because uh, they have events in here all the time. And in the evenings, you can imagine live music. But in the mornings, if you're looking for yet another place to grab a, a breakfast, they have this little buffet set up over here. Um, I actually had this the day before we went into Amber Cove. Uh, not that many items, but uh, a great, great, you know, quick grab and go uh, for you if you just want to you know not spend too much time going through other areas of the ship uh, this is the area where the band will perform here and they've had quite a few uh, here since we boarded and uh, this is a huge space this is much larger than the one on uh, say Carnival Horizon uh, that's kind of the, the same thing with a lot of areas on board they really upped the size not every space but something's been tweaked or you know they've added elements to make it more um, usable maybe for this particular ship design over here they have a couple of uh, foosball tables and some more seating and they really like these kind of container looks like a shipping container and uh, we were told the other day that guests were kind of wondering constantly where the bathrooms were and they didn't realize that these latches here actually open up to restrooms. So um, they, they had to actually put signs. Originally, they did not have that kind of signage, I was told. Uh, so here we have the Heroes Tribute Lounge, uh, which was first uh, added to Panorama when she launched uh, a couple of years back. <laughs> One thing I thought was really cool is they have this military truck that's actually a dispenser for the soft serve um, that anybody has access to. It's, Really, the space was designed for uh, veterans to gather um, or active duty and, uh, you know, just kind of chill out. Uh, but uh, it is welcome to families and, you know, certainly anybody can partake in the, uh, the ice cream here as well. 
Now this uh, section, as I think I said earlier, this is called Summer Landing. This is another one of the zones on board. And uh, the outside area is called the patio. We're just gonna go check that out right now. And uh, this is pretty common on board this ship where you have a lot of spaces that open from one area to the next. Uh, the flow is, is actually very good. They've got these little display cases here, which is kind of cool. We'll just head out here to this infinity pool. So this is aft on deck eight. Uh, it's technically part of summer landing, but this area is known as the patio. But this is this is really the spot to be. Uh, does get quite crowded, I would say, on the sea days. But uh, today, as you can see, with Paradise Island in the back, not too many takers right now. And they've got these a few of these, not many. I think like five or six of these uh, in-water loungers, which is uh, a nice touch, gives you that resort feel. You can kind of see too that uh, even the seating in, in some of these more specialized areas um, is a little upgraded. Uh, you know, really, really nice furnishings and uh, places to lounge. But of course, this is a brand new ship, so everything looks great. Uh, just give you a walk through here. Uh, even though there is the buffet uh, for the breakfast that they have in the Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Brewhouse, uh, they do also have the Guy's Pig and Anchor Barbecue, which is available on sea days. Uh, this has been added to a lot of the ships recently. Uh, originally started as Fat Jimmy's, if you remember that. Um, but uh, now it's uh, branded with Guy Fieri. And it's not open right now. It might open later on today as we're sailing away. Let's uh, look at the menu. Um, but like I said earlier, this is really been uh, expanded from other ships that offer this. There's plenty of seating over here and there's the other side of those uh, shipping containers that I was mentioning earlier. A lot of construction going on right now. They're building a brand new terminal here in Nassau. Uh, in fact, there is no terminal currently, as you can see. Um, but yeah, it's quite a busy port. Uh, I'm sure this is long, long overdue. Uh, but it's going to take quite a while. I'm going to give you a shot of uh, the new categories that they've added to Mardi Gras. As you can see up here, these areas that have the red, these are the XL suites. Um, what's nice about these is they have a fully unobstructed view from the balcony when you're sitting down you can see clear through from your room you can see outside clear through uh, this is a very specialized category so it does come with a number of perks one being the loft 19 which we've uh, actually had full access to this cruise um, you know it's a special uh, perk for us uh, being here with the media but i uh, do um, uh, you know, you do have access if you do book that category, you will have access to the Loft 19. We'll be taking you up there in a short little bit. So lots of space here on uh, Deck 8 aft. As I said, on a sea day, this is quite busy here. And then as you wrap around, got these nice uh, plantings here. I don't believe they're real, but they look cool. Uh, they have two whirlpools. Now this is kind of reminiscent of uh, the uh, Dream Class ships, uh, at least the breeze. Uh, you can actually see here in one of these uh, XL class suites. These rooms off the corner actually have hot tubs um, that are fully enclosed in glass, so when you're at sea, the wind won't uh, bother you at all. And uh, that's another entrance or exit to uh, Guy's uh, Smokehouse. And then also off the side here, so you're not too far away from a drink at any point, you've got the watering hole. So this bar is available uh, to guests that are out here laying in the sun. And uh, again, very, very nice. Lot, I mean, there's really no shortage of places to sit on board. You've, you've got lots of outdoor area. And uh, the first section we're going to walk through, so from aft to forward, this is no smoking. And uh, this is the al fresco area that uh, you can have your pizza, your panini, you can pretty much eat whatever you want here, uh, sit and have a drink. It's, uh, it's got wind breaks here, so it won't be as windy when you're actually sailing the vessel. And then just beyond this area here, it comes into the smoking area. So um, really through the forward section, if you will, of uh, La Piazza is the smoking area. 
for those that uh, are looking to know, but there's a very similar look to the bar on the inside, Bar de la Rosa. Okay. And we'll work our way back into the piazza. And one thing I didn't mention uh, previously, because this is actually on the other side, is there's also Cucina de Capitano on this side of the ship. Uh, we did eat here on the second night, I believe. And again, this is an option for main dining. So if you are, uh, you know, on any time uh, dining, you can actually come here or your time dining. I keep mixing them up. Good morning. I'll just give you a little look into here. This is Cucina de Capitan. So right now they are offering breakfast, and uh, but you can eat here at dinner and they'll, they'll uh, give you the regular menu. But if you come here on lobster night, which is the second night of the cruise, they will actually serve lobster in here and it is no upcharge for that at all. Uh, this again is one of the largest Cucina del Capitano's I've ever been at. And uh, it's always been a great value at $15. But uh, now, um, and we're not sure how long this might be, but it will be included uh, as uh, an option for all guests as well. And uh, I like these uh, nostalgic pictures here of captains throughout the years um, from various carnival ships and events. Here's the Al Fresco dining at Cucina del Capitano. Uh, this is what I recommend uh, for you to dine uh, on your complimentary Italian meal when on board Mardi Gras. Welcome to the Lido here on board Mardi Gras. This is deck 16, obviously the Lido deck, and this is also considered one of the zones on board, the Lido zone. And here to the left, we have the seafood shack where you can get lots of different market fresh uh, items every day, and you can see the pricing there. It's pretty reasonable uh, on a per item basis. They also have uh, this place, which is, seems to be very popular with people, the Fries Steam Dream that has uh, different options every day. Today is the beef and tofu, and then the Mad Sizzle is going to have a kebab. There's uh, plenty of seating on Lido Deck uh, if you're looking to dine outside here. And uh, it's in the shade, which is fantastic. Take a little walk around the Lido Pool here. For a ship this size, you might think that this Lido Pool is not that large, but there are two other pools on board, so this is actually uh, good enough for, for this area and people have other choices if they want, including the two aft pools, uh, which are fantastic on board. And that's, that new uh, screen that they have up there is so bright that even in the hottest, brightest day, you can see sharp as anything. It's, uh, probably one of the nicest looking screens I've seen on a cruise ship. And then over here on the right side, we have the Blue Guana Cantina. One of my favorites for breakfast, uh, serving tacos, burritos. Uh, if you happen to come for breakfast, they also have arepas. And then they have a really great salsa bar. You can top it with whatever you want, cheeses and salsas and lettuce and onions. Uh, makes it even better. And heading back on the other side, where again, there's tons more seating with ocean views. Now, if you're a Carnival past guest, you understand that uh, most of their newer ships have the uh, Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, as well as the Red Frog Rum Bar. Well, this ship actually has neither. Instead, what they've opted to do was create this really interesting tiki bar, which is two levels. And uh, it's got a really great island inspired decor. Fishnets and masks and so forth. Nice carved columns here. So we're gonna cut through the Lido Marketplace and head over to the back part of the ship. At all the main entrances to the Lido Marketplace, you have these great hand washing stations. Uh, get out there guys and washy washy. Uh, they have some nice new stations uh, designs here for each, 
each of the different types of foods. Here's you got the sea dogs. That's kind of an homage to the old uh, sea dogs that used to be out uh, near the uh, kids' play area. You know, gelato, and uh, even a shawarma station over here. That's pretty cool. I really like the island decor here. Uh, even the carpet kind of looks like a boardwalk. Uh, really nice colors, and this looks so much like the original renderings. Um, I was hoping it would be a bright kind of concept like this, and it really seems to have come to fruition. We're now aft on the Lido deck, and we're entering the tide's pool area. And this is the home of the one and only Shaq's Big Chicken. And as I've said in my previous videos, this is one of my favorite spots. In fact, I will say this is probably my favorite new dining spot on board uh, the ship. Uh, it's just great. I have, I've had the breakfast items, I've had the lunch items, and uh, nothing has disappointed. Hope to see this make its way onto more Carnival ships, and it definitely will be coming to uh, Carnival Radiance uh, once it finishes her transformation, and uh, we can only hope for other ships in the fleet. Here's the uh, aft uh, Tides bar. There's more seating over here. And uh, right near the Tides bar, you've got swirls to get your ice cream fix on. Definitely go for it. And while they've always had uh, pools on the aft part uh, of their ships, you know, the, the tides pool, this one is different because it is a, an infinity edge pool. Uh, we're just here in Nassau today and you can see the Paradise Atlantis over there, Paradise Island. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, this is a uh, infinity pool. So you get a different perspective from up here. Uh, they really try to keep common elements that people are familiar with on their ships, but kind of plus them up a little bit, and they definitely did a great job with this pool. Lots of shallow spots for you to enjoy without going too far into the pool. Really great uh, shower here that anybody can roll in pretty easily. Just walk around a little bit to the other side. And there are two very, very large whirlpools flanking the tides pool. Uh, would have been nice if there was a little bit of shade on them, but uh, it's okay. We are now here on uh, deck 17, which is also known as the Upper Lido. Uh, they've got some great chairs here that uh, are quite comfy. You can grab a shaded spot if you want. And uh, fun fact, the other day when we were in Amber Cove, these, some of these chairs made their way off the ship and you might've seen them in our video uh, getting off the ship. They had these in the little shade area on board, which was a nice touch. And of course, when you're up here, you have a great view of the tides pool below, and I'll give you another shot from up here. Very windy today here in the Bahamas. All right, so let's make our way around the deck here. So here on the aft uh, upper Lido, deck 17, on the uh, starboard side, you do have the smoking area. Uh, there's not a lot of smoking areas on the ship, but this is uh, one of them. We're going to make our way around, still on deck 17, but make our way around the port side. And as you can see, more, more seating. 
Now here we have the exterior area of Club O2. This is the uh, teen group, ages 15 to 17. Uh, this is kind of a new thing for uh, the teen club, uh, have to have some outdoor space. So even they will get to enjoy these great views when they're on board and in their club. We're here at Club O2. Plenty of TVs, game systems, lots of great stuff for the kids. Now on the little below, you were probably uh, noticing that we passed by the Blue Iguana Cantina and normally on the opposite side of Blue Iguana Cantina, you would find Guy's Burger Joint. On this ship, they've actually decided to move Guy's Burger Joint up one deck and it's actually next to the Club O2 uh, Teen Club. Great move, I think, as far as the kids, for them being able to have access to burgers. But uh, just in case you're wondering where it is, it is on board, and it is bigger than ever. And as you can see from this line, at 12.07, uh, it is as popular as ever. And we have a lot of uh, seating right by the water here. These uh, sort of picnic tables. Still have the great toppings bar. And lots of seating out of the sun as well. Some more beverage stations. And what goes better with a burger than a swirls ice cream? And there you go. Ice cream and froyo. And as promised, we're coming around the top area of the Red Frog Tiki Bar. And uh, similar to the one downstairs. How you doing? Excellent. Hi, Maria. I saw the video. Oh. I love it. All right, good stuff. Are you ready to get your game on? Head to the Warehouse Arcade. They've got everything from prize machines to uh, winning coins, and uh, they've got a new virtual ride machine here, air hockey. Uh, of course, you can get your tickets for prizes uh, that they offer here at the arcade, uh, and everything else, even my personal favorite, old school pinball. Can't beat that. Here's the view from deck 17, upper Lido of the lower Lido. Okay, let's head up to uh, deck 18 aft, and uh, this is the fun deck. This is where all the new uh, toys and water park are, and uh, I don't think Bolt is running at this particular moment in time, but uh, we brought you footage, we'll bring you some footage some more, and uh, we're going to try to ride it again later today. But uh, let's we'll do a little walk through here. So this is deck 18 aft or kind of midship aft. So you see here in the sports square, they do have some billiard tables, although not easy to play uh, while on a moving ship. And uh, this is the jogging track that uh, wraps its way around uh, most of the aft part of deck 18. This is the behind. If you ever wanted to see what it looks like behind the giant screen on Lido, this is what it looks like. And as you can see here, seven laps around the jogging track is one mile, if you're keeping count. So I don't know if it's because we're in port right now, but the ropes course is closed. But definitely check out our video uh, of our POV experience on the ropes course. By far the most challenging and most exhilarating ropes course that I've ever been to. And here is the basketball, full court basketball. And a nice little touch they added here were these like stadium seats. So if family doesn't necessarily want to play, but they want to watch you, they can definitely do that here. And as you see, the ropes course completely circles around the basketball court. Yeah, one thing about this ropes course, it's, it's higher off the deck to begin with. So if heights are a thing for you, uh, that's going to be a challenge right from the get-go. 
Uh, but then you have uh, two, I mean, there's lots of new elements that are, are pretty interesting to try, but uh, definitely the, the zip line section, which is quite far across and leaves you dangling over the water is quite exhilarating. Um, as is the plank where you basically just walk to the edge of a board and look straight down. Here's some of the track on Bolt. Uh, Bolt's a pretty quick ride. Uh, takes probably around 20 seconds or so. But, uh, I mean, it's just amazing to think that this is actually on board a cruise ship. Uh, especially when you're at sea and you're just seeing water all the way around. It's, it's an amazing thing. Heading towards the aft section here into the waterworks. Always loved Carnival Waterworks on board every ship. Um, whether I have my kids with me or not, I'm always up for a good water slide. And on this ship, it definitely does not disappoint. So in addition to the yellow twister, which Carnival has on pretty much all of their, their ships these days, uh, you also have the uh, Orange Thunder, which is like a drop slide. So again, we have video of that. Get in and hold on and the floor drops from beneath you. And then there's Blue Lightning, which is a uh, head first mass racer. We use these black mat, these uh, blue mats over here. And uh, that's also a real, real wild ride. Uh, and uh, watch out for the water up your nose at the end of that one. more of the track of Bolt, as you can see here. This is like where it winds around. Kind of gives you that sideways orientation. And then here's uh, Mini Golf. And I think they really stepped up the Mini Golf as well on board. It's uh, more challenging, it's uh, more interesting, and uh, I think it even looks, looks nicer. Uh, I know some of the ships have the two level, like on Carnival Breeze, but um, I really like it being on one level. It's uh, it actually works a lot better. And officially this area is known as the ultimate playground. And I think it really does give you uh, an ultimate experience. Like I said, whether you're an adult, a kid, kid at heart, it's uh, an amazing thing uh, to be able to have this uh, available to you on a cruise ship. There's a little bit more of the water park. And then of course they have the splash area for the younger kids with a couple of slides some little areas to play and lots of spray fountains and nozzles and of course my favorite the big power drencher which is getting ready to dump right now if I hear the bell it's coming it's, and there she goes yeah another shot of the twisty water slides So as I said before, this jogging track wraps pretty much around the entire back section here. Uh, good run in the morning, because uh, it's a little hot right now, midday. And there's a good shot of the shiny new Carnival funnel, which is probably one of the largest I think I've ever seen on a Carnival ship. And here we're walking under the uh, section of the ropes course that actually has the zip line, as you can see there. So it's, uh, I don't know how long it is, maybe 50 feet, uh, I would say, from end to end. And uh, it's just exhilarating. So 
something a lot of people always ask me is how tall do you have to be or how much do you have to weigh? Well, here's the ropes course. 48 inches tall is the minimum. And uh, try to give you a shot of the other rules and regulations here. So 300 pounds is the maximum and 48 inches is the minimum. of the Lido pool deck area here. We are now gonna head to deck 18 forward and go to the Serenity deck. Now this is open for adults only and an adult is considered 21 and above to access Serenity. This forward section here though, anybody can actually come here. Uh, there's a, a door, sort of an entrance to Serenity and you'll know when you're there. Um, these, what look like funnels here on the forward part of the ship. Uh, we did the uh, tour the other day with the environmental um, executive from Carnival and they explained that these are actually uh, the vents for the new LNG system on board the ship and uh, they, these these are kind of just covering so that you know you don't see all the pipes and such that are going uh, through but uh, as we've mentioned before LNG is extremely clean burning in fact you'll never see smoke dark smoke clouds coming out of the funnel on board an LNG ship if you're ready for a little serenity let's head on in I always enjoy coming to Serenity um, when I'm on carnival ships. They're uh, very serene, imagine that. <laughs> There's two of these large whirlpools here in uh, Serenity. And uh, the only unfortunate thing is there's not a lot of shade area, but they are relaxing. When you can find one that's empty like this, it's even better. Uh, lots of sun loungers. And speaking of shade, there is these uh, covered areas here. So if you're looking to duck out of the sun, this will be a good spot for that. And of course, as you can notice, these are more premium loungers than you find uh, just around the Lido pool area. It's a little more upscale looking. Now, if you're ready for this, because this is probably the nicest Serenity on board any Carnival ship. Carnival sunshine comes pretty close but uh, I think this is even nicer. There's a sunken sitting area here where you can enjoy some drinks. And then there's, and then there's a nice pool with a waterfall in the back here. And uh, as you can see, it's very popular today. Uh, not everyone's getting off the ship here in Nassau. And up here on Serenity, not open right now, but they do have the Fresh Creations salad your way. And they'll make salads for you with fresh proteins and, and greens and toppings. And uh, we do have some video of that that uh, you can see on the channel. And of course, the Serenity bar. Gotta have access to a, a bar. I think they strategically try to place bars no more than 15 or 20 feet away on board these ships so that uh, you're never too far from getting a frosty beverage. As I was saying, the Serenity area, um, deck 18 forward, is uh, definitely one of the largest on any carnival ship. And it does circle the entire forward section of deck 18. We're gonna pass through here. And as you can see, loungers, loungers, and more loungers with a spectacular forward view. Uh, if it's not too early in the morning on port arrival, this would be a nice place to enjoy uh, getting into port. And again, there's some shaded areas as well as full sun whatever you prefer and these nice uh, two-person uh, beds here as well and it wraps all the way around this forward part of deck 18. now usually on most carnival ships that have a serenity that is the top deck that you can go to um, on board but it's not on this ship there is one more deck you guessed it, it is Deck 19, and we're going to take you to the exclusive Loft 19 right now. 
So come with us to the Loft 19 section here on board Carnival's Mardi Gras. Now I have had access to Loft 19 all week uh, because I'm here through the media. Hello, hello. Hey, hello. it's Joey. Hey, Say hi, Joey. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Good to yeah, see you. Course. Last day, unfortunately. Uh, last day, last day. It's so yeah. sad, but you know, um, it's been a um, cool, cool, you know. Yeah. Have you here. Nice to have people for the first yeah, time in yeah. a long time. Yeah. So this is Loft 19. Now this is exclusive, typically, uh, for guests that are staying in the XL level suites, Carnival XL suites on board. Uh, those are brand new to Carnival, uh, just uh, for this ship and for celebration. And the third yet unnamed XL class ship uh, coming, I believe in 2023, 424. And uh, this also wraps around the not deck 19's forward section of the ship and anybody can access well anybody that has access to an XL suite can access these sun loungers that are wrapped around the outside of the uh, of the deck so loft 19 is a great uh, feature and perk for those that do enjoy higher level accommodations like the XL class uh, suites on board but if you want something even more special they do have these uh, cabanas that are available for rent um, is uh, I had mentioned in some of my other videos these cabanas are available on a daily basis or for the entire week and uh, they're at a rate of $500 for one day or a cruise long pass for $2,000 and uh, you'll get some perks and like you know water and uh, meal service here um, as well as just having a, a nicer more private space to uh, chill out and uh, have some shade or one of these nice loungers in front of your cabana Take you into one of these Cabanas just so you can have a look this one's empty So you do have a nice uh, little sofa here and some rattan furniture And then these loungers right here that have the blue cushions these are for people in cabanas and the ones that have like the beige rattan with the, the blue uh, headrests are for any guest inside the XL, sorry, the Loft 19. And yet another water area here that's exclusive for XL Suites, uh, and those in the Loft 19 is this Infinity Whirlpool here. It's uh, a very large one. and actually has these sort of lounge areas that are jetted here on the side. And you'll have a view down to the Serenity area below. So that's the Loft 19 area. Uh, there's just this one last spot up here that has some faux palm trees, but it gives you that tropics no matter where you are. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this, this tour. Thanks for coming along on this complete walking tour of Carnival's brand new Mardi Gras. Don't forget to like this video, post your comments and questions, and subscribe for more Talking Cruise.